Hi, it's Cheryl and I'm going to share with you a little bit of an insight into the shading that I shared during the week on my Florosphere page. It prompted a lot of messages from people wanting to know how they could do the shading themselves and people were asking me was it hard to do and also somebody asked me something really um, interesting. They asked me if the reason that I had the backgrounds are drawn out in some of these fluorosphere if the reason was so that people could do this type of shading. The answer to that is no, I didn't even really think of it when I was creating the backgrounds. I was actually just coming up with different ways that were interesting to add a little bit of dimension to them. So it's something that I discovered while I was colouring. So this is the fluorosphere that prompted all the interest and it's one of the kangaroo paws. In each of the fluorosphere books there's 15 uh, wildflowers and each of those are featured four times so in four different colouring in sheets in four different ways. So this one if you want to follow along is on, in Fluorosphere Calm uh, Australian Wildflower Colouring In Book and it's on page 15 and it's a kangaroo paw. And I'm going to show you in a minute in a little video how to get this effect of shading on the backgrounds. You could use it and I'll also show you how to do the shading in the coloured parts as well. Now you could use this effect of course in any of the fluorospheres but you could use it in any colouring in at all. It is just a simple drawing technique and those of you who are already doing art and drawing will recognise straight away what I'm doing. Those of you who aren't, here's another little skill to learn. But the thing is it's all about relaxing and it's all about enjoying yourself so don't overthink it just just relax <laughs> just take the simple steps and just add it when it feels right to you and I'm sure if you look at it that way you'll find yourself relaxing into this technique as well this one more than anything else that I've been showing you is a really focused and really beautiful balancing grounding little exercise because you you're just using one color using it's a, it's a very ground color that dark gray of a graphite pencil and you're looking at light and shade you're looking at shadow and dark and you're just there in those shadows and in that light and finding it and focusing it on it and I find it myself incredibly relaxing don't worry about what's right or wrong to start with just practice and it's one of those things I find it's like driving a car riding a bike it's just really simple and easy once once you get the little hang of it and it's just automatic and you just fall into it and it goes you go with the flow with it so enjoy shading and if you would like to ask more questions if you'd like to share what you're doing as well it doesn't have to be fluorospheres it could be these techniques with other colouring in as well hop along to Facebook to um, Facebook Floresphere. You just have to look it up in the uh, pages section. Until then, have a very relaxing and a very happy time colouring in whatever you're doing. Bye. So, last week I shared this Floresphere, which I haven't finished quite yet, but I ended up with a lot of messages asking me how I did the shading on this. Now, a lot of the Floresphere's in my books have backgrounds to them. Some don't, some are all over patterns and some, I'm not going to be able to find one now am I, <laughs> what I want to show you, some are just the fluorospheres on their own like these ones and they don't have a background. You could add your own background if you wanted to. But this is one that does. Now of course you can do whatever you want to do but um, this is just another suggestion that's all. So you could colour this in with colours as well but I just thought I'd try something a little bit different and do a little bit of this shading effect here so it would really make the front sort of pop out a little bit more but still give me some dimension here now to do this what you're going to need is a 3B pencil so any 3B pencils good but I do prefer the Stadler ones actually like the Mars Lumograph ones but I think I've left them in another pencil case somewhere but these are good too and then you need a pencil sharpener because you'll be making sure at times that your pencil is very sharp 
These paper stumps are what I use to blend. You can pick them up at art stores and you can also pick them up at $2 stores. I see them there a lot. If you can't find those, you can make them by just winding paper really tightly. But you can also use cotton buds. Now these ones, you're going to have to really sort of manipulate them and make them go a little pointier. Or you can get pointy ones as well. So there's a few different options for you. So to actually do the shading, now this one's shaded in the colour sections as well, but I'm going to just show you today how to just do, oops, get my camera angle right, how to shade in these bits here just without the colouring today. So to do that, we think of where a light source is coming from. This big fluorosphere, I'm imagining that the light source is coming down the page this way. So imagine, or not even imagine, I'll put this, this little crystal heart of mine here and you can see what happens. We're getting the shading down here and across here. It may help for you to get something like that, like you could use a little crystal, <laughs> you could use anything and it could just help you see where the shading's going. The other thing is you can imagine the light source is coming from straight over the top. So you'd have shading all around the edges as well. So you can imagine the light's shining straight down. But it does help if you do have it a little bit dimensional, like it's coming from one side. So what you're going to do with all these little bits is coming in with your pencil and shading on the bottom. So if the light's coming down here, of course all the shading would be underneath and this whole section here I'm going to imagine that that's all receded and that it's quite deep like it's almost like a hole so I'm going to color in or shade in quite darkly around the edges and then even come into the middle a little bit but I'm going to show you the magic you don't have to go all the way in there the same here going around and then on the edges here as well okay then we get our little paper stumps and you're going to blend in little tiny circles. Okay, now don't worry if you go over the lines because you can erase really easily. These ones like this where I've got that sort of bigger hole, when we're going around in little circles it's just going to naturally blend in the middle there. The same with this one. And you'll end up with lead pencil of course on your paper stump. I'll show you what you can do with that in a minute. This is all practice. The more that you do this, the better at it you'll get and the more natural it is. But the big secret I always find is working in tiny little circles, tiny, 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 tiny little circles like that. Now that excess that you've got on your paper stump after you've done a few, you can come into places like this, pushing quite hard and shade and see how that almost makes it look like a like a ribbon like it's undulating like these sides have gone down a little bit there we go now I might want to come in the side here this whole line here and make this be on top so I'm going to come straight down there and I can shade over the whole lot because I'm making this ribbon if you would like to call it that well it's not a ribbon is it it's a it's a petal, a part of the kangaroo paw. But just as far as shapes are concerned when we're working, thinking of it like that. Let's see how that's made that whole thing recede. And then these little ones here, if we want to give them a little bit of dimension, we can come in there. Now you can use any sort of eraser when you're coming in here to tidy it up. But I find that these are brilliant these pencil erasers, lots of different brands. This is a Stamford one, there we go. But, oops, got a bit of fluff on the end there. You can come in afterwards and tidy up. So if you've got a little bit too much, and the same thing, circles, coming with little circles to tidy up. Because when we, the thing is, whether you're drawing, when you're, whether you're shading with your pencil, or whether you're using your eraser, if you start doing things in great big lines, you end up smudging things. So little circles, blowing it off, or the other good thing, hang on a second, I find a little paintbrush. 
a, of course a clean one that you haven't used for paint and dry is really good to just dust off any of those eraser shavings but really really lightly because you don't want to smudge the rest of your work there okay so you can pop that back out again and then coming through here that line and shading and when you do this see how I just did that one sort of line there okay so I can come back in again and put a little bit more in there and coming back again and pulling that back out this way and then to define it a little bit more I'm going back in there again and making it darker particularly on this side and just put one more little line in there a little darker now you can use other pencils other grades of pencils and um, I'll put a little list of those up the higher the number the darker the pencil so a 6b is going to be darker than a 3b and what you want your b's your h's are hard pencils you don't want those because they, they don't blend very well at all now see how that's really dark and I might go oh that's not that's not too cool so I can get rid of that. Don't do it too often though because you will, each time you do use the eraser, you are sort of um, gouging into the paper a little bit. I know this is a bit of a plug, but I have to say my Florosphere colouring in books are lovely thick paper, so it'll take a while before you do that, but it still happens. So with any paper, you just have to be careful. Okay, so that's what you do. This is the easy way to do it. There we go, and then coming in on the sides. Now all around these ones here, the same thing. When you're getting all stuff like that, this really sort of, it's, little, it's almost furry, isn't it, little bits? <laughs> coming all the way around like that, and then blending it all out. And then just coming back and defining it few more little strokes okay there we go because they're quite spiky bringing in little spiky bits on the shadows when you stand back on it it does sort of bring that look out of it being spikier sort of emphasizing it I'm just what I'm doing here is just taking a little bit of the shading off the coloring there so it pops a little bit more okay and then each of these little ones you can work in all of these I find this as relaxing as the coloring in now if you course as I said I've actually gone over some of the coloring in as well it's the same principle you just have to be very light and very careful because you've colored in it depends on what you've used especially if it comes to you erasing any of it. So I'd be really light to start with so you're not coming in too much with that eraser. Being really careful. Let's see how that's popped that one out. Oh, I'm not out of camera shot, am I? No. There we go. Same thing. Less is more, especially over the colouring bits because you can always add some more afterwards. There we go. I think I already did that one there, didn't I? Yeah. So I could just make it a bit darker to show you. Even though I just said less is more. More is more. There we go. <laughs> okay. And see, so I just went over there. Now you're going to have to be really careful because you've coloured this in because it will lift a bit of the colour, of course, depending on the medium that you use. So that's how you do the shading. And it's all practice. That's all it is. The more you do it, the better you'll get at it, the more fun you will have. But that's just one technique that you can use when you're doing colouring in, any colouring in, any colouring book at all. Okay, I'd love to see your shading. Have fun.